Chris T here, NF Source at SD70, coming to you with a new freight car pack for Run 8, the Mixed Freight Pack 2. As you can see here in front of me, it contains uh, two types of cars, the PS4750 three-bay covered hoppers made by Pullman Standard, and the Evans 100-ton coil cars. These cars came out the other day in conjunction with the Trona Railway update, and base game update number 9, which addressed a few uh, issues with the game itself. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at these cars in depth and let you know what we've got here and how they look. So let's go ahead and get started with these. Alrighty, first up we'll take a look at the Pullman Standard PS4750 3-bay covered hopper. Production began in 1972 and ran all the way to 1981. This fleet of hoppers was the largest single body covered hopper fleet of any builder and is personally one of my favorite freight car types. This type of covered hopper is still common today and can be seen on many freight trains across the country almost 30 years after production ended. Let's go ahead and take an individual look at each car and each paint scheme and see how they look. First up is the BNSF car in the simple swoosh scheme. Not too complex. Uh, basic lettering around the car, builder's plates, uh, informational lettering all the way around, a very nice looking car. Not flashy, just a basic BNSF car. Next up is the CSX version in the former Family Lines SCL l &N scheme with also the Georgia Railroad, Clinchfield, and the West Point route mentioned there. Uh, a very weathered and beat up car. The ends near the slope sheet, a lot of rust, the handrail stanchions have some rust. Uh, it's a very good looking weathered car. It shows its uh, age very nicely. Next up is a car labeled for the DGHX, the North American Chemical Company. A plain looking car, very basic. Got the logo above the reporting marks there. Rust in places you would expect it, especially down along the discharge gates where the doors would move to unload the car. So another very nice plain looking car for a chemical company. Next to last is a car labeled for NA. HX. This is owned by GE Rail Services and will be part of a broad lease fleet. Again, another lightly weathered car. Mostly dirt. A little rust here and there, but it just looks plain dirty. Uh, a very plain Jane car for a leasing company should suit many industries in Run 8 with a blanket focus. And last but not least is a car lettered for the Union Pacific. The railroad's name spelled out right on the broad side. Each letter individually spaced between the vertical ribs. A lot of nice weathering, some dirt, right under the F is that nice little splotch right there that really stands out. And then down along the frame, next to the discharge gates, you can see some weathering and some dirt down in there where the car would get really dirty. A really nice looking car. This entire set really helps complement the original covered hoppers that came with the sim. As I said before, these cars are a great complement to the covered hoppers that came with the base Run 8 game. They can be used to haul all kind of things, borax, potash, grain, corn, any kind of chemicals, plastic. These cars are a great all-around car to use for bulk commodities and will be an invaluable asset to industries and unit trains in the sim. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look down at the Evans 100-ton coil car. A brand new car to the sim and a very specialized car that can be used for our steel producing industries. The Evans 100-ton coil car was developed in the late 1960s as a way to move finished coil steel products from the mills to further refining processes. In doing a little research, I come to find that the Conrail versions in this pack are actually built for the New York Central, even predating the Penn Central merger. Let's go ahead and take a look at these different cars, and they all have different variants, so let's take a look. Alright, first up we'll take a look at this CSS coil car label for South Shore Freight. We'll look at this one without the shield so we can get a look at the inside where the coils would lay. These cars all come with loaded and empty variants and three of them have the shield and the other three don't so you get a little mix and variety based on how they're hauled. Uh, the car looks really good, light weathering, a lot of rust inside where the coils would bang against the steel and possibly chip the paint and rust would get in there. 
Let's go ahead and bring it up and take a look on the inside. Okay, here's a top-down view of one of the cars without the shield on it. As you can see, the inside is nicely weathered. A lot of rust inside. The wood has some wear to it, where the uh, coils would lay down in there against the wood. A really nice-looking car. You notice the rivet detail uh, along the edges. And also, you can see down through the walkway slats on the outside of the car. So some really nice detail from Run 8 on these cars. Alright, now we move on to our Conrail variant. As I said before, this would be an ex-New York Central car. Really nice road-specific detail here. Uh, you have the Conrail reporting mark. Uh, next to that on the right, you see where the load limit and the light weight numbers have been changed. So that stencil has changed over the years. The small Conrail logo on the right side next to the builder plate information. And then to the right of that where it says 984F, that is Conrail's designation for this car. So that's a really nice touch to go in there and add Conrail specific details. I'll take a quick look at the coils because they have changed as well. Okay, in this top down view, we're going to compare the old coils on the right with the new coils on the left. On the right is the coils from the gondola pack we've had for several years now. And the left are obviously the new coils inside the Evans coil car. Uh, the, the differences are night and day. On the left, the new coils are, have a little reflectivity to them. They get the writing that comes from the steel mill, you know, to denote maybe the order number, the type of coil it is. Got some new banding. And on the right, you have the old one. It's kind of kind of dull, and the banding's not too pronounced. There's not too many variations in it. It'll still look nice, though. Combined together, you'll get a little differences, and it'll really mix things up. Okay, moving on down to the BNSF car. You can see it's pretty plain. Looks like an older car that has been repainted and had updated stenciling and stuff put on it. Uh, reporting marks, weight limits, restricted loading information there between the uh, where the coils would rest, builder's plate. At the far right end of the car over that reflective striping would be BNSF's model designation for the car, the FT62. Again, you've got the updated uh, coils in here with their reflectiveness and the... Uh, the markings, a really good looking car. Alright, these cars look good without the hoods, but they look even better with the with the protective hoods on here. This is the CSS car, and it has a chassis system and an EJ and E, Elgin Joliet, and Eastern Railway Shield. Uh, this is pretty neat to see. This is really liven things up in freight trains. And the EJ and E hoods are pretty neat too because you still see them. Uh, I work around Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and off the Union Railroad, you'll see. They're marked out, but you can tell they were EJ and E because actually on the ends of the cars they don't they don't change the stencil, so you, it says EJ and E on the side of the hood. But this is really nice. Uh, uh, the weathering's really good. They're beat up. You can tell they're old. They've been in service for a while and they've seen some use. So these these hoods look really nice. Also to note, the hoods are angled. They're not rounded like some modern hoods. So they look, got a little age to them with the angled hoods, but they look they look really good. I'm really impressed. All right, moving down to the Conrail car with the hood on it, you get uh, kind of like the good, the bad, and the ugly thing here with uh, the Conrail car, the Conrail hood, which is really beat up and rusted look, and it really shows its age. Then you have the black NS hood on the left to really contrast with things. And, and one thing I really like about this is that we don't have much Conrail stock and Norfolk Southern stock. So it's kind of nice to see these road names showing up and... and you know, bringing a mix of things. The black NS really stands out against these cars, so it's a really, really nice addition. Okay, and lastly, we have the BNSF car. Uh, pretty plain Jane. The hoods have the older Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railway logo on them, what some guys call the Bayer Aspirin logo. Uh, the hoods aren't in too bad shape. Uh, minimal rusting, minimal damage, so they kind of represent a newer car or one that hasn't seen much service, so really stark contrast from the first two that we saw so um as you'll notice the frames like the base car itself are the same between the ones with the hoods and the ones without the hoods but it doesn't make much difference also these cars as with all the other cars even though they have the hoods their heights will change if you change their load and empty status all around a really nice car from running something we needed something new to uh come to the sim really good looking stuff Alrighty guys, that will do it. That wraps up our look at the new Freight Car Pack 2 featuring the Pullman Standard Covered Hoppers and the Evans 100-ton Coil Cars. 
You can get these over at Run 8's website, at run8studios.com. Go to Train Sets. Down at the bottom of the page, you can find it for $10. Uh, for 10 bucks, not a bad pack. Uh, new, new freight car types. Uh, brand new coil cars that you never had before. So a, a really nice way to update the sim. Bring some older car types in. And uh, for especially for industries that we have, like the steel industry. So, you know, it complements our coil cars. The co new covered hoppers really complement the big the big six bays we got for the plastic pellet cars and then the older uh, covered hoppers that came with the sim. So like I said, go on over to runningstudios.com, uh, go to train sets, it'll be down at the bottom for $10, pick them up today. Also, uh, if you're playing, make sure you get the new uh, base game update 09, that'll be right on the front page of runningstudios.com. You'll need that to continue playing, especially if you're going to play with the server, but it has some... Uh, Nice updates and fixes in there. The community has found, so make sure you pick that up. As always, take care, guys, and I'll see you out there.